वेलकम क्लास माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर डी एस राय प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग बी बी डी आई टी एम लखनऊ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल टेकअप अ कोर्स के सी ई जीरो सेवन सिक्स अर्बन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्लानिंग टूडे लेक्चर इज लेक्चर थर्टी टू इन विच वी विल डिस्कस अर्बन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्लानिंग प्रोसेस जोनिंग एंड डाटा बेस references that we are taking chakravarti partho and das animes principle of transportation engineering papa costa and prevendas transportation engineering and planning kadiyali and lal principal and practices of highway engineering r srinivas kumar introduction to traffic engineering S.K. Khanna and just to highway engineering. Some material have been taken from Naptel and Internet. The contents today we will take up zones, data needs assessment, demand data, demographic data, land use data, economic data, data on travel, supply data, impact data. So let us start now zones. we are talking a lot about the zone of the urban areas so what is zone first of all to represent area that may be broad uniform factors means area that has a uniform factor like a population land use income employment or accessibility admission uh, administration boundary like ward thana and up jila may be taken into account a study area is to achieve degree of accuracy sub divided into zones which is mainly based on the smallest administration zone in the study it is called c zone or traffic analytic zone that is tej a study area is subdivided into analysis zone a starting or ending at a single point in the zone that is called a centroid the point represents the zonal center of the transport activity the form of the traffic zone system adopted for this study was constant by the availability of socio economic data currently available and which could be reliably predicted for the future years for traffic demand model calibration and application the zonal structure has been created in order that area sharing homogeneous characteristic suppose hazranganj is one zone and gomti nagar is another zone hazranganj has mainly commercial areas whereas gomti nagar is a uh, residential area so these two are not homogeneous at all hazaragand itself has a homogeneous in characteristic gomtinagar has its own homogeneous characteristic so for the zonal structure this has to be considered this will enable the planner to link information about the activities travel and transportos transportation to the physical location in the study area the transportation analysis zone tas vary in size depending on the density and the nature of the development in the urban area tas may be a small as a city block but rural area the tas 
may be large as 10 or more a square mile. The zone attempt to encompass homogeneous urban activities which are all residential, all commercial or all industrial. Zones are designed to be relatively homogeneous traffic generator and are size of size so that only 10 to 15 percent of the trip are intrazonal. Established zones is their compatibility with the transportation network. Network should be form the boundary of the zone. The steady area means the land surface area which was mapped and quantitatively sampled during the baseline vegetation inventory. A study area generally coincides with the permit area that is amended area, but may exceed those boundaries with the prior approval of the administrator. Once the study area is defined, it is then divided into a number of a small unit called traffic analysis zone that is TAS are simply zones. This the zone with in the study area are called internal zones. Zones are molded as if all other attribute and properties were concentrated in the single point called zone centroid. The zone centroid are connected to the nearest road junction or rail station by centroid connectors. Both centroid and centroid connectors are notional. It is assumed that all people have same travel cost from the centroid to the nearest transport facility which is the average for a zone. The interaction from the outside world is normally represented through the external zones. The external zones are defined by the catchment area of the major transport links feeding to the study area. Although the list is not complete, few guidelines are given below for the selecting zones. Zones should be match other administrative divisions, particularly census zones. Zone should be have homogeneous in character as we have discussed already, especially in the land use and population etcetera. Zone boundary should match cordon and screen lines, but should not match major roads. Zone should be as a smaller in size as possible so that the error in aggregation caused by the assumption that all activities are concentrated at the zone centroid is minimum. Whatever the things happen that should be minimum. The objective of data needs assessment to be identify the data set needed for planning. This all comes under the data needs assessment. Depending on the specific context, transport data needs may assessed on the project basis. The business basis or the system basis. The purpose and content and 
extent of data needs are different for three bases. In many cases, data requirement have been listed or evaluated as a part of transport research project, many of which are concerned with the model improvement. Transport planning project usually have a clear objective and designated time range. Data in this project are determined by the requirement of a specific modeling, validation and evaluation. Data are organized in a way that best suit the need of the project. An alternative is to examine the transport stock stakeholder who are collecting and holding this data. Administrative agency usually manage large quantity of data that are relevant to their function. To study the data availability in these agency, it is necessary to investigate their missions, goal, objective and development strategy. A more comprehensive assessment on the transport planning data is to regard the data as in a whole system and classify them into meaningful group. The research proposed a data organization framework that incorporate the data. Compound of component of supply, demand, system performance and the system impacts are considered. The conference at the six data issues that are socio-economic data, financial data, supply and system characteristic data, demand and use data, system operation data and impact and performance data. These data are required for the transportation planning by making use of entity relationship analysis, data related to transport entities and the transport activities can be identified and the relationship among the entity established. What are the main data? We have talked a lot about the data, but what are the main data are to be collected for urban transporting, transport planning? Transport demands includes first demographic data, second land use data, third economic data, fourth travel demand data. So, these are the basic data required for the urban transportation plan. These data are consumed by transport demand models. What are the models? generation, trip distribution, model split and trip assignment. So, the transport demands models at both aggregate and the disaggregate levels. Now, come to the demographic data. Demographic data are most commonly available from government statistical agency, census commissioner and the office of director general census. 
census data generally collected on the decennial basis are most comprehensive and important source for demographic research. Transport planning models require such demographic data as is in the uh, demographic data uh, these are available is of each person, income of each person, occupation of individuals in a household, whether it, they are car ownership, bicycle ownership or and expenditure structure of a household. For example, categorical analysis for trip generation need to clarify classify trip rate for each type of household. So, these all are available in census book. Then come to the land use data. Uh, this is very important for the urban development uh, planning process. Land use development is an effective indication of urban growth. Both land use planning and transport planning are indispensable in a, a comprehensive long range urban planning. In a urban area, land surface, whatever we fix that fix the boundaries or cordon line, the area is fixed. Now, we have to make arrangement of each and everything of urban requirement in that particular area. There should be a school, there should be a playground, there should be hospital, university, college, a research institute or may some area where uh, the, the forest land should also be available. So, these are to be planned in the area under consideration or area under study. Urban land uses are normally classified into two or three hierarchical level with the higher level representing a broad categories. Urban land use is among the most important input to transport demand modeling. If we have no land, we cannot go for the development of transport system. Many kinds of model have been developed to describe the interaction between the land use and the transport. The location of activity in a space influences daily activity pattern which being bring about the need of the travel. As in my view, land data is a very, very important for the development of the urban area. Because uh, urban area has a economic activities. So, economic data are also available for urban transport planning. Acting as in incentric factor, the transport system makes a special contribution to a city or the nation's economy. Transport sector itself account for quite 
a significant share of the GDP of every country. On the demand side, both passenger and freight transport rely heavily on the relative cost for a different kinds of users. Now come to the next one is a data on travel. The passenger travel demand modeling represents a major effort in transport demand analysis. As we have discussed, the models are sequential demand, hence trip generation, trip distribution, model split and trip assignment. And this requires a basic data for their analysis. In general, demand modeling takes a, takes a count of three base elements. What are the base elements? People, their activities and the space context within which the activities take place. This is the basic thing. Thus, the discrete choice approach is generally best on the microeconomic policy. Nowadays, we are talking very much about the microeconomic policy of the country, where certain kinds of utility are calculated and compared for the individual choices. Now come to the supply data. Road network and the related facilities are component of urban infrastructure that are fundamental to mobility. The operation of urban transport infrastructure indicates the real performance over the time. The performance is needed to evaluate system performance or predict future trend that is using regression analysis or trend analysis to forecast traffic volume of a road network in the near future. I am just giving an example. Before construction of the path in Lucknow, it will be very difficult to accommodate the traffic coming into the city or going outside of the city if side path was not built. Again, Sahit Path is now going to be congested. So, the outer ring road of Lucknow is now going to construct to taking care of the future development of the transport system. Road networks and the related facilities are component of the urban infrastructure and that are fundamental to mobility. The operation of urban transport infrastructure indicate the real performance over the time. The information is needed to evaluate system performance or predict future trend and that is using regression analysis and trend analysis to forecast traffic volume of road network in the real future. Now, supply data, variables detected are the monitored for the operation includes traveling speed, rate of flow, density, volume on the various links. Types of vehicles travel through 
through the monitoring site. Incident such as level of congestion and the accident. Operating restriction that is a vehicle speed, height and weight limits, tolls and other facilities uh, as specific as charges. Fundamental class of highway segment, frequently updated condition measures for bridges, arterial or street system and other facilities. The inventory of material used in construction and the maintenance. Information on agency or the company responsible for maintenance and operation of the facilities so that the data supply and the cost can be related. Each urban area or a study area needs material for the development, either for the infrastructure or tangible materials that all have to come from outside. What are the quantity of supply and how many vehicles are involved in supply? That should have to be cared. These data are important to system evaluation and the performance measurements, which indicate effectiveness of a transport system. The operational performance measured by number one, ease of travel, number two, quality of service provided, number three, service reliability. And important consideration is maintaining acceptable level of mobility. To measure the public transport performance, many factors have been identified under the category of input, consumption and output. The linkage among these factors indicate the performance level of the perspective that, uh, that are service efficiency, cost effectiveness, service effectiveness, uh, these are the three perspectives. Now come to the supply data. As I have told you, see here, this is the input. What are the input for development of a city? Labor, capital, fuel. These materials are to be brought from the another place for the development of the urban areas. Uh, these inputs includes a service efficiency and cost efficiency is also very important. So, whatever the material we have received that should be service efficiency and the cost effectiveness and then we go for the output that is service miles and the hours. This is the consumption passenger revenue and passenger miles. This includes the service effectiveness, means this is a chain and the competent authority have to keep a very a strong views or a strong eyes on these factors for the development of the urban planning system. The last is the impact data. One of the most important characteristic of the urban transport system is that it has a direct or indirect 
impact on the urban activity system. Whatever we have talked that have a impact on the whole environment and that should be considered while proposing a urban development planning system. Thank you, thank you very much.